Hey guys, so today I thought I would do a video about my top 10 favorite TV characters or like characters from TV shows. I watch a decent amount of TV, not a ton. I may go back and realize I missed someone and be like, God damn it, mm, brain why? But as most of my lists go, this isn't in order. The only one that I think is in order is the first one. The first one is definitely my favorite. But I think that's about it. Most of these are like, I thought of like a franchise, thought of grabbed some characters and then moved on to the next one. But number 10, I'm just going to get into it because there's no reason for my intro to be five minutes long. <laughs> number 10 is the Countess from American Horror Story. I know a lot of people weren't a big fan of Hotel. And I'm very hot and cold with American Horror Story. Like, most of the seasons I loved, there have been a few that, um... I didn't even get through. I know Hotel wasn't everybody's thing. I fucking loved it. Like, part of it's probably because I love Lady Gaga, but when I watched that, I was not into Lady Gaga. I thought she was an interesting artist, but I wasn't into her, so it really wasn't... I wasn't biased at the time. Now I'd probably love it anyways, because I'm like, it's Lady Gaga, what do you want? But. I really like genuinely liked Hotel a lot. There were issues with it, like, but I really liked the like vampire thing, like the the whole thing I really enjoyed personally. I get it wasn't everybody's thing, whatever. I get yelled at for liking that season a lot because people really just were not a fan of it and I don't really get it. Like it was good. I don't know what you want from me. Nine is another controversial American Horror Story character, Michael Langdon. Listen, I'm just saying I loved the last season until the last episode. The last episode sucked. The ending sucked. Like, could not have hated the ending anymore. Like, no. No, 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 no. It sucked. I'm sorry. I don't want to be that person, but it did. But the, the first episode I wasn't in love with, but I was like, eh, I'll watch it next week and see. I'm not in love with the first episode of American Horror Story Seasons a lot of the time because it's like a pilot episode, basically. Like, you're getting, re you're getting introduced to a whole new cast of characters. So, like, it makes sense that the first episode isn't always, like, the best thing in the world. But watch the next week, liked it a little more than... By, like, the third episode, I was into it. I don't get... I get why people didn't like the ending. I hated the ending. I thought it sucked. I thought it was just kind of a cop-out way of dealing with the whole thing. Like, it just seemed ridiculous. But I liked the season a lot. I know a lot of people didn't, which I thought... It seems like my favorite American Horror Story seasons are the ones that other people don't like. Like unpopular opinion. I love the season, but I think Murder House is overrated. Like, everybody talks about Murder House as if it's like the best season of television to have ever aired. And I'm like, it's good. I really and truly do love Murder House. I have watched it many, many, many times, but it's overrated. I'm sorry. <laughs> if I feel like the season of American Horror Story that I love, other people don't like, and the seasons that I'm like, eh, or that I hate other people like. So like, I know a lot of people, yet again, unpopular opinion, a lot of people really liked um, Roanoke. I was not a fan of Roanoke. I liked the first half of it, and then I didn't finish it because it was so bad. I could not get through it. Like, I was really excited when they announced it was about Roanoke because I'm like, oh, that's an interesting thing. And then it, like, had all this weird shit piled on top of it that I was like, okay, bye-bye, and I didn't like whatever the, what was the kind of political season called? Cult? I wasn't a fan of Cult. Didn't finish that one. I think a lot of people weren't a fan of that one, though, so maybe I'm not alone on that one. <laughs> We're moving off of American Horror Story here, so apologies if my opinions about American Horror Story are not your cup of tea. Number eight is the only character from Teen Wolf on here, even though I love a lot of them. Number eight is Styles. I just love him 
so much. Like, I like a lot of characters in that show. I really like Scott. Lydia's great. Kira is dope. I loved Allison. Mm. But Styles is just... He's just better than the rest of them. I'm sorry. I just... I think Styles just is, like, the comedic relief you really, really need in that show. Otherwise, it would be, like, painfully, like, serious sometimes, I think. So I just think he's a really good fit for the show. I just love him a lot. He's great. <laughs> Next, um, I have quite a few characters from The 100 on here. I don't have a ton, but I do. It's like my favorite TV show. I love The 100 dearly. That episode last night was whack. You guys have will be seeing this later, but I, the day I'm filming this is the day after the second episode of season six aired. That was whack. That was... I do not know what that was. That was whack, but I loved it. Number seven is Commander Lexa. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people thought I didn't like Lexa because I love Bellamy so much because I find that people tend to like one or the other. I love both of them. They can. There's enough me to go around for me to love Lexa and Bellamy. I loved Lexa so much, and it was just so unfortunate the way they killed her. Like, just so unfortunate. Like, and it was just dumb. It was, yet again, it was a cop-out way of dealing with something, because I feel like it could have been pretty easy to kill Lexa off in, like, a battle setting, and she still could have, like, sacrificed herself for Clark or something. Like, I, that still could have happened, but... I think it would have made more sense if there was some, like, big battle and Lexa died as opposed to just some, that weird bullshit that happened that just made no sense. That season, that was that happened in season three, I think. If that happened in season three, which I'm 90% sure it did, season three sucked. I love the show. It is one of my favorite shows ever, if not my favorite. Season three sucked. I'm sorry, I said what I said, but I, I just love Lexa so much, and it's just a shame that she isn't there anymore, and we didn't, we just didn't get enough of her while she was on the show, but, oh well. Number six is Magnus Bane from Shadowhunters. I have a very complicated relationship with Shadowhunters, the TV show, because I read the books, I probably started reading them when I was like 12 maybe 11. I was a young child when I started reading Mortal Instruments and loved the movie. Then they didn't make a second one. And then years later, they started making Shadowhunters. And I was like, okay, I'll give this a try. I fucking hated it the first time I tried it. I hated it. And like, the first few episodes are not the best. First few episodes are rocky. And then I would say like, a year and a half, two years later, I came back to it. I was, like, really sick one time, and me and my friend, like, decided to watch it. Like, we both like the books. Let's try it again. We made it through, like, the first two episodes, and I was like, okay, maybe there is a light at the end of this tunnel. And now I love it, and I'm so sad it's over. And yet again, the ending kind of sucked. But that aside, I love Magnus so much. Like, sent books whatever. I wasn't the biggest fan of him in the movie. Nah, like, I just felt like he wasn't the best, but, um, Harry Shum Jr., I think, is the name of the guy who plays Magnus in the TV show. He was so perfect. Like, you could not have cast Magnus better looks-wise or acting. Like, he just played Magnus so well and looked exactly how like, I imagine Magnus to look, and I just, I love him so much. Yet again, decent bisexual representation, which we never get. Like, ah, uh, what? He's, like, one of the two bi characters from TV shows that I watch, that I can think of. Maybe there are more that, uh, there are some that are, like, casually bi, I guess, but like, the only, like, explicitly bi characters that I can think of are Magnus and Clark, and I love them for it, and I just love their characters either way. Like, Magnus is just dope. 
we stand. Number five is Clary. I, mm, I love Clary and I'm so sad they did her so dirty with the ending on the show. Like, what? What? You did what now? I just thought the whole thing was kind of eh, but that aside, I'm gonna push that over here. Mm. I just, I love her a lot. I relate to her a lot. She's super, I like the way she comes into herself because she's so like clueless and kind of helpless at the start and then completely like steps up and like owns. It's so cool. And it's, I really liked um, Kat McNamara, I think is her name. I loved her. She was perfect for Clary. Like, perfect. She's just, and she's so pretty. Like, what? What? But I loved her so much and I'm, I'm just sad I'm never gonna get to see him again. Like, it was such a good show. Number four is Jace. Naturally, if Magnus and Clary are on the list, Jace has to make the list. Jace is like, oh my god, one of my all-time favorite fictional characters. Yet again, he's one of those male characters who like still has like well-written emotions. He's definitely like, he's similar to Bellamy in a lot of aspects. They both are like, He's a little less emotional than Bellamy is, but they do have very similar aspects, which I think is part of the reason I like both of them. I just tend to go towards that type of character, whether it's male or female, and I just, I've always loved Jace. He's just, well, sometimes he's such, like, an asshole, and then other times he's just, like, so, like, vulnerable and emotional, and it's really cool. I really, I like pretty much everything they did with him in books and the show. The show, yet again, wasn't a big fan of the ending, but c'est la vie. The rest of it was good. We will let it slide. Down in the top three. I've spoken about all of these characters before, but we're gonna do it again. Number three is Jeremiah Valeska. Yet again, I don't really feel comfortable talking about the plot twist with Jeremiah. Yet, yeah, like, I feel like that has to sit for way longer than it has because it's I know there are a lot of people who are like just now watching Gotham and I would hate to spoil that I don't know if I'm like ever gonna feel comfortable talking about that because it's just such a big plot twist and it is the most well done plot twist I have ever seen there are two but the first one is the one that I'm really talking about when it comes to the plot twist. The second one is really amazing too, but the first one is like knock you off your feet crazy, but it somehow works in the context. And I just loved the way they dealt with Jeremiah because he was a lot of the time with, it, he was the Joker. A lot of the time with the Joker, He's just portrayed as crazy. Like, he's just crazy, and that's all there is. But he was crazy and wicked smart. So, like, it wasn't just the, okay, I get it, you're insane and you want to kill people. He was crazy, but he also was so smart, it made him creepier. Because, like, when he's just like the way overplayed version of the Joker, then it's slightly less scary because you're like, what is he really gonna do? Like, okay, we get it, whatever. But he was so smart that it was just creepy. And all the like look changes with him and like the way he evolved was also super creepy. Like, I loved a lot of the villains on Gotham, but I definitely think he was the scariest by far because you never knew what he was gonna do like there was that one scene with one of the built there was that one scene with the clock tower last season that i was kind of like whoa okay gotcha nice <laughs> the last two characters are both from the hundred surprise i think you probably know who they are if you've watched any of my videos talking about, like, favorite characters. Number two is Clark. 
my my girl love of my life i love clark so much and i hate that in the new season everyone is just blaming her for everything like i know she made some mistakes she made some big mistakes but at the time they were all what she thought was right they didn't all turn out to be right like you know leaving Bellamy, the list goes on. But like that shit with Murphy last night, I was like, I will go back to hating you. I will, don't make me do it. I just, I wish people would give her a break and like let her prove that she's not her mistakes. And I just, I love her so much because she's flawed, but like not too like a Jesus Christ level. And I love, uh, excuse me and screaming about Bellamy. He's like the, I know that whole thing last night, he kind of held it against her, but he wasn't exactly himself. But he's the one who like doesn't, even if he thinks it, even after what, sh leaving him in the fighting pit was like a oh my god moment. He like let it go pretty quick because he knew deep down that Clark did what she thought was right and he knew she didn't want to do that but she did it anyways because she felt like she needed to to protect Maddie. Also I love Maddie so much. She is so cool. I just mm, had a mm, ah. I love Clark too much and number one you all saw coming is Bellamy Blake. I just, I have loved Bellamy from like the second I saw him, even though he's an ass in the first part of season one. Like he is horrible, but I still was like, oh, I kind of like him. And then luckily they redeemed him. So I don't have to feel bad for liking his character. He's just, he's so good. Last night, that whole thing with him, like, losing it, yet again, 100 spoilers if y'all are not caught up, nah. but that whole thing last night with him, like, kind of losing it and trying to kill Murphy and Clark, and then Clark knocking them all out, still, I don't know what happened to Murphy, like, cliffhanger, okay, but when he woke up and realized and then like looked over at Clark with that look on his face, I was like, bitch, do not make me cry. Do not. We are two episodes in. Do not make me cry, sir. There is like at least one moment every season where he, Bellamy just makes me cry. Like it is just a thing now. I've just come to accept it. There's just always this one moment where I'm like, ah, stop, stop. Please, my heart cannot handle it. He's just such, other than season three, we are excluding season three. He's a very well-written character. Yet again, season three did not happen. <laughs> did it happen? He's a very well-written character and yet again, he's made a lot of mistakes, but also at the end of the day, they were all what he felt like he needed to do. Like. Bellamy is very selfless in a lot of ways, but that kind of tends to cloud his judgment, I think, in a lot of situations, and then he ends up making a pretty rash decision that maybe wasn't the best thing, but it happened. We're done. I don't know. I just, Bellamy is definitely, like, one of my favorite fictional characters of all time, if not my favorite fictional character of all time. He's just so good. My boy. My love. <laughs> I hope this wasn't me rambling. I can't... Yet again, I've, I haven't been wearing my glasses in videos because they reflect weirdly, so I can't really read the numbers. I think this has been almost 20 minutes, but I don't know. We'll find out in editing. Woo! <laughs> But I hope this wasn't just me rambling for 20 minutes. I hope there was something coherent you can take out of this. But I let me know if you want to see more videos like this, like favorite video game characters, movie characters, book characters, that kind of thing. If you want to see that, let me know. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. 
拜。<笑>